It's been a crazy last couple of days. If you are a NCAA football fan, well, really just a college sports fan, really. Uh, as you can see here, I've titled the presentation I want to talk about today as the changing NCAA. Uh, this is obviously in a response to the news that the U that USC and UCLA are now joining the Big Ten. Uh, now, I've been seeing a ton of videos on everything that's going on. I wanted to take a little bit of a different route. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm actually going to take a look at, you know, the whole, I guess, money aspect of, of things that are going on, as well as how this is going to change the landscape of, I guess, co collegiate sports, right? Um, yeah, I don't really have much of an intro other than that. But let's go ahead and let's, let's get into it. Uh, the first thing that I want to start with is, you know, let's talk about what this is really about, right? But you don't have to kind of beat around the bush here. It's about the money, right? Um, as you can see here, I'm going to kind of hop all the way to point four here because this is really the big piece here. So doing a little bit of research and I found out that according to Sports Illustrated, uh, they released a March 2022 article. They estimated how much each conference uh, thought they were going to make uh, for this year, so 2022, on a per school basis. Now, the per school basis is important, right? I've been seeing a lot of videos. You know, people keep comparing SEC and Big Ten, really, because they're making the, the largest amounts. Keeps talking about how, you know, this means that the SEC is going to be making more money. Uh, or, I'm sorry, they're predicting out that the SEC is going to be making more money versus the Big Ten. Now, that is true, but that is true if you're just looking at their TV deals. So, right now, yes, the SEC is making more money than the Big Ten. Uh, when it comes to their TV deal projected out over the next, I believe it's 10 years. However, you know, obviously you're making more, more money than just the TV deals. So because of that, the Big Ten currently um, is, in terms of their projections, you know, going to be making more money on a per school basis. So right now the Big Ten is making more money. But regardless, the SEC and the Big Ten seem to be the two conferences that are really making their, their names, really expanding, and, and not just expanding for expanding sake. So no disrespect to, to the other conferences. They are adding schools, but it seems as if the Big Ten and the SEC are, are adding bigger, more popular slash well-known schools, especially when it comes to these collegiate sports. Now, I've so, now as you see, I've shown here kind of who are the big two here. So it's the Big Ten at $57 million, um, per school that they're going to that they're projecting they're going to make in, uh, this year. SEC is at $54 million. Big 12 comes in third with $40.6 million. But the caveat for the Big 12, as well as the Pac-12, is that for the Big 12, while they're making $40.6 million per school, they're going to be losing Texas and Oklahoma, right? Remember that. And then the Pac-12, while they're making $34 million per school, they're going to be losing USC and UCLA. And as we're going to see, the USC-UCLA is a huge, huge loss to the Pac-12 versus the Big versus the Big 12, if anything. But And then lastly, we have the ACC that's coming in that makes about $30, $30 $31 million per school. Now, I have kind of given the SEC credit where credit's due here. I do believe that over the coming years, because of the Texas and Oklahoma acquisition, that will push the SEC over the Big Ten. Um, Texas and Oklahoma are both really big markets when it comes to to football. And and let's let's kind of pause it here, okay? There's things that that we have to be honest about when it comes to collegiate sports. Um, watching an ESPN. Uh, video or segment or what have you, and they said something very interesting. Uh, they point out that one of the schools, I can't remember if it's USC or UCLA, uh, but they mentioned that how they have 35 sports, and of the 35, 32, 31, 32, loses money every year. All right, I'm going to say that again. Of the 35 collegiate sports that they have at that school, 30, 31, 32, lose money every year. What that means is that there's only three or four sports that actually make any kind of money. And we know for a fact that the largest money maker when it comes to these sports programs is football and basketball. Now you may have other sports that make, you know, good money. Let's say if your hockey team's been winning for, you know, 30 years or, or whatnot, your, your ba baseball team, you know, volleyball team, water polo, whatever, maybe you have some other team that make, uh, some money because you're just really well known in that sport. But it even if you do have that, it will pale in comparison to the amount of money that 
the collegiate football programs will make. And there's been, you know, go to ASPN 30 for 30 documentaries. They do this tons and tons of times where they show the, the amount of money colleges are making uh, way, way back when, when they had the Big East, how much those basketball programs were making versus how much the football programs were making, for, or at least for the colleges that have football programs, not even close. College football will always make more. So because of that, when they're deciding these types of conferences and redistricting or reconferencing, if you will, the huge predicator is going to be, what does this mean for a football program? And because of that, that's why you have, uh, that's why you have colleges like USC and UCLA, Texas, Oklahoma, that are saying, you know, they're looking at, you know, I'm making 34 million right now, and I'm bringing the bulk of the fans here. I can go to the Big Ten if I'm USC. I can go to the Big Ten and you know, almost double my money. That's amazing. Um, that that seems like a no-brainer, right? And in addition to that, I mean, again, we have to be honest when we're talking about this. The level of competition has not been up to to par when it comes to the Pac-12. I mean, you can also make that argument with the Big Ten as as well, the conference that they're moving in. But even still, like, you know, they'll at least have one, like you know, like an Ohio State, a Michigan, Michigan State, you know, whomever. They'll get one one in there that's, you know, maybe has a chance. But you know, the Pac-12 typically it's 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 that level of competition does need to to, to increase, and it, it appears if USC and UCLA, at least, uh, have decided to move on. Now, let's go ahead and let's take a look at kind of the different conferences and what does this mean um, from a school standpoint. So right now, the Big Ten and the SEC now have 16 teams, right? And we're going to get into what that means as well. But for the Big Ten, I wanted to kind of show you all of the schools and in particular, which markets they're in, right? So as you know, the Big Ten has normally been known as the Midwest uh, Conference, right? SEC is more so the Southeast. That's their, their name. I think you had like the Big E's back in the day, which was more so East Coast. Pac-12 was West Coast. And then you had like the WAC, which is kind of like the Mountain. Uh, or I'm sorry, Mount, Mountain. Um, conf- what was it? Uh, forgot forgot the Mountain West Conference, yeah, which is more so like the Mountain Conference and some other pieces. But regardless, when it comes to the Big Ten, they were first known as the Midwest. But now, as you can see, they have been expanding over the past five, six, seven years. Now they're, in addition to being in the Midwest, they now have some East Coast schools, such as like Penn State. Rutgers, Maryland, and now this seems as if they're looking moving also over to the West Coast with USC and UCLA. So the Big Ten, it seems to be broadening their scope, and to be completely honest, becoming from a collegiate conference to more of a national conference, right? So I do think that that is going to be in their favor. Scheduling is going to be a little bit of a tricky situation here. Um, you know, if USC is playing, you know, Penn State, for example, I don't know if you know Californians want to wake up at no, 6 a.m., uh, I'm sorry, 12, so 9 a.m. on a Saturday to watch that game. I don't know how that scheduling is going to go, but but regardless, you know, you do have those people now uh, that are going to increase, especially from the from the West Coast, because I do think you have people who are going to be from Northern California and who may be from, you know, all the way up to Washington who wants to watch a USC game. So I do think that that does spread that out. Okay, next up, let's talk about the SEC. So the SEC also has 16 teams. Uh, They are now adding Texas and Oklahoma, but again, more so that Southeast, right? Now, the great thing about the Southeast is that they are 100% known for football. And luckily for the Southeast, football is the hugest moneymaker, right? So a lot of these colleges kind of already have that within them. They're going to continue to make money, and it's it's only going to grow. Texas, in my opinion, is the hugest get out of everything because California – uh, while USC is in California, I, I really feel as if it's more so that Southern California, well, I mean, that's the name of the school, but it's more so that Southern California um, aspect of it, whereas Texas, in my opinion, is much more broader. Yes, you have Texas and m fans, but they're already in the SEC, right? So it doesn't really matter. Yes, you have the you know Baylor, TCU, Texas Tech, those guys as well, a couple other ones as well, SMU, but Texas is Texas, right? That's going to be the big eye getter, in my opinion. So you're getting that state as well as Oklahoma. but from what we're seeing here, it seems as if they're looking to stay in the South. Will they get a a school that, that's outside the South? Um, the closest they've come to is Missouri. Uh, but even Missouri, you can still kind of argue that Missouri has kind of some of those Southern roots. Missouri is in the Midwest, but again, you, you could still argue that it could, could fit. Don't know if they're going to go outside of that. It will be very interesting to see if the SEC goes to like the West Coast or anything like that uh, to pick up some of the... Uh, former Pac-12 teams. We'll see that, but in my opinion, they're going to stick to the South. 
They're making a ton of money there. It, it makes sense. And there is a ton of dip schools that are still in the South that they can pick up. All right. So what does this mean when it comes to, you know, just kind of everything? So it seems as if the big two conferences now are the Big Ten and the SEC. So what does that mean in terms of what other schools are out there that could potentially uh, be added to them? So I wanted to look at the other conferences, including the independents, to see where they're at today and, again, what that could mean. Now, when it comes to the independents, number one is always going to be Notre Dame. Uh, I think that, you know, we're looking at uh, free agents, if you will. Notre Dame is the key. How Notre Dame moves will, in my opinion, greatly affect how everyone else moves. Uh, and we'll get into that in a second. But regardless, for, for right now, Notre Dame is an independent for football, but they are an ACC affiliate, meaning that outside of football, they their other sports like basketball, for example, is in the ACC, right? Now, again, I've already told you about how football makes up the bulk of the money here. So they want to be independent because they have their own TV deals off uh, with, I forgot which TV station is, but they have their own TV deal. But as this is going, as this is increasing, I mean, you just saw the Big Ten. Um, the Big Ten is probably going to go from 57 million to now they have USC and UCLA. It's probably going to be in, you know, 60, 70 million per school. If I'm Notre Dame, I want to cut of that, right? I, I don't exactly know what their TV deal is, but it's probably not going to be 70, 80 million, all right? So because of that, it's now going to make sense for Notre Dame to get into one of these conferences, the SEC or or the Big Ten, or get into the ACC if they can keep their independent deal as well as make that additional uh, 30, 40 million from the ACC. I mean, I don't know if they're going to get the full, but I do think that it's going to benefit both uh, conferences if that deal kind of comes up. But again, there's I'm not going to be claiming to be an expert on this. There's, there's different things you can do here, but uh, that's kind of what I see with Notre Dame. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and segue over to the ACC. Now, who does the ACC have left in it? Can it survive on its own? You know, what's going on here? Now, the ACC, if you can kind of just do a quick look, let's be honest here. The ACC, for the most part, is a basketball conference, right? You've got pretty good, solid conferences. I mean, uh, schools such as like Duke, you got North Carolina, you got uh, Syracuse, you got Wake Forest, you know, it's pretty good as well, Louisville. Um, so you got some pretty good basketball conferences. Like, this is really, when I see this, I think basketball, I'm going to be honest. Now, they do have some really good uh, or basketball, but let's kind of start there. Now, the one caveat to them is Clemson. Clemson, as we all know, is a huge, huge football behemoth, right? And that is what makes the ACC, Clemson and their Nord Notre Dame affiliate affiliation, that is what is carrying them, in my opinion, right now. Notre Dame and Clemson leaves, we're pretty much looking at kind of a basketball uh, type of conference here. Right? So I, I do think that, you know, while you do have, uh, you know, Florida State, for example, Georgia Tech, you know, those are really good schools. They haven't been doing Virginia Tech as of as of late. They haven't been doing as, as well as they could be, right? So because of that, I just, I, I do think Notre Dame and Clemson, if they leave, this is, this is done which is why the ACC, in my opinion, they need to be looking to pick up new schools or they need to be looking to merge with other schools. Now, for these conferences, ACC, Big 12, and Pac-12, I didn't include uh, the fact that they're going to be adding schools as well, just simply because, no, and again, no disrespect to these colleges, but none of the colleges that they're adding are a USC or a Texas or a Oklahoma. They're, they're, they're good schools in, in their own right, but they're not at those levels of eyeballs that are going to come in and say, hey, you just made an additional $10 million per per uh, school just because we just added this guy, right? So as you can see, just it's going to be – there are certain schools they have to keep, and if they can't keep them, the ACC will have to merge, in my opinion. Next up, we have – sorry about that. Uh, next up, we have uh, the Big 12. Um, I also think I missed out on Miami, uh, so I apologize for that one too. But Miami would also be a good school too, but but again, they're not, not at Texas. All right, so Big 12. Big 12, as you can see, like from if Oklahoma and Texas stays, they look pretty good. But with Oklahoma and Texas leaving, you now have a Big 12 that has eight schools. And, I mean, when I'm looking at this, who's the biggest school that they have left here? Baylor? Oklahoma State? I mean, come on. The, these are really good football uh, schools as well, but they're not, again, they're not Oklahoma. They're not Texas. 
the Big 12 right now needs to, they need to either expand more or merge. I'm seeing this, I'm looking at this merge. That's that's my first thing that I'm thinking of. Big 12, ACC, Pac-12 as well, merge. Because the schools here, you're losing, you already saw the money that they're making on a on a school-to-school uh, -school basis. Leaving, losing Oklahoma, losing Texas, that's going to greatly hinder them. And it, it just doesn't make sense for them to continue with this conference unless they're able to grow their funds. And same with Pac-12 here. Again, UCLA and UC, USC are now leaving. That leaves a huge mark. Only 10 teams. They're, that LA market is now gone, which is the hugest market by far. It's going to hugely impact them. It's not going to be good. Now, there are other schools, but the big piece that, that I've been hearing here is Oregon and, and uh, Washington. Maybe they'll be able to, you know, keep the Pac-12 open. Here's the truth. All right. And um, you look it up. You can Google this. Uh, ESPN has been all over this. Once UCLA and USC left, Oregon and Washington reached out to the Big Ten to be added, and the Big Ten told them to wait while we make other decisions. If Oregon and Washington felt as if they could survive by themselves within the Pac-12, they would not have reached out to the Big Ten. All right? This is a money grab. This is a land grab. This is a super two conferences, and everybody's trying to be a part of it, and everybody realizes that the conferences that they are in now Again, unless a merge happens, is not going to survive. Okay. Now, before we get into kind of the, the next phase here and kind of like the big free agents out there, you know, I do understand that I was actually watching a couple of uh, school specific live streams. Um, so I'm not, and I'm not going to say who, but it was a Pac-12 live stream uh, for a specific school on this on this uh, on this page here, and they were frustrated because. They didn't understand why the Big Ten didn't pick their school to be one of the first ones to, to kind of come into the market. And the people on the stream, you know, to their credit, they 100% understood. And they were like, hey, look, the reason why is because we're not a USC. A USC football is huge. We're not a USC football. But their fans and their you know people who I imagine have attended the school legitimately did not understand. So it's going to be an interesting dynamic when you have people who believe that their school is on a top tier level. Um, in terms of, you know, the amount of money they can make, right? Not education, not nothing like that, but more so the type of money you can make. So it's going to be interesting to see people who are going to say, you know, hey, we've got 20, 30, 40, 50 Olympians. We've got, you know, 50 national championships. You know, we have more national championships than USC, for example. You know, if you look at total, all of their sports, why aren't we, you know, being considered? We're much better than them. Look, I don't want to go back to the first page here, but it's about the money, all right? Uh Eugene, Oregon is in L.A. Um, you know, uh, Spokane, Washington is in L.A., right? Like, great colleges, great backers, great alumni, but it's not the L.A. market, right? And, and that's just the truth. And because of that, having, you know, saying that my college can, you know, Pac-12 will be off okay with the money and all that stuff, like, no, you need certain markets in order to, hinge your conference on and now that they're out that's tough right so what's next so i've kind of talked about this uh the already big 10 and sec seem to be the new uh super super leagues if you will and the rumor is that they're not going to start stop here with 16 they're going to go either to 20 or 24 which is really interesting and we're going to talk about that too um second option here is as i mentioned acc big 12 and pac 12 they need to just need to combine and, for, and form a third tier two league now, I have heard the argument, hey, if they combine, they can be the third Super League. No. No, they cannot, and here's why. We, the public, we know that all these three conferences, like we know for a fact Oregon and Washington has reached out to, to the Big Ten. We're going to find out through, through time, and I'm pretty sure through leagues, who's reaching out to the Big Ten and the SEC. Because of that, those universities and colleges that aren't selected, they're automatically going to be seen as a tier two or, or, you know, right below the huge leagues, right? Because if you're reaching out to these leagues and you are conferences uh, and you want to be a part of them and they don't select you and then you end up in another conference, right, where you have to stay at your conference, that automatically makes you a, a tier below, all right? Like you can't say, hey, I want to be a part of you. They're like, they're like, nope, can't be a part. You're not good enough. And then you think that you're going to create something, at least at the beginning, and it's going to be on the level. Maybe 10 years from now, this third league may be 
Maybe it'll be a Super 3 if they can win a couple football championships specifically because that's where the majority of the money is coming from. Sure. But for right now, once if it once it immediately starts, if it does, they're going to be seen as, as a little tier below. As a tier below, I should say. All right? The last one, and this is kind of a throw, shot in the dark here, but and this is a rumor here, but they're saying that the Big Ten and the SEC, once they hit their full capacity of 48 teams combined, if that happens, they could combine to create their own league and leave the NCAA behind. That would be interesting. I'm not going to get too in-depth on that, but I have heard that that could be a possibility. Again, we're talking 5, 10, 15, well, not five, probably 10, 15 years down the line, maybe. All right? Okay. So now that we've kind of talked about that, let's talk about, you know, the big, the fun times, right? What are some of the biggest free agents that are out there when it comes to, to these colleges, right? And I did list them based off of a ranking um, in terms of my – own personal belief in terms of how these these universities are ranked. Uh, so I just wanted to have some fun with this here. But for the biggest free agents, the first one that I thought of was Notre Dame. I don't think that's going to be any argument with anybody, the amount of money that they make, the eyes that they have upon them, you know, on a national perspective. They're number one, not even close. I, if you're one of these other colleges, like, you can argue as much as you want. It doesn't matter. Notre Dame's number one, right? Now, number two I picked was Stanford. Now, I'm pretty sure there's going to get a bunch of backlash. I'm, I'm sure. I know Clemson is probably what most people would say uh, would be people's number two. But I believe it's Stanford. Um, I do know Notre Dame and Stanford kind of have uh, somewhat of of a uh, of a connection. Um, Stanford, I just I like Stanford because uh, their location in, in California. And, and I do think that if you can get them into your into your conference, uh it's going to sound weird, but it, it helps the prestige, right? Stanford is a very prestigious school. Uh, and I know we're talking about money here, but that prestige is that legitimacy. Um, and I do think that that it does also help um, the GPA of your college, right? Which, based off of what we're getting of your conference, based off what we're getting, if we're considering this as collegiate sports still, you're going to need that. Uh, next up is Clemson. Like Clemson, um, they, they've been winning a lot recently. They don't have that Notre Dame 100-year history, right? Uh, again, they're third, so that's going to be pretty big here. I mean, I see them doing very well over the next 10, 20 years, especially from a revenue standpoint. But I just didn't have them in the top two just for that reason. If they had a little bit more legitimate uh, longevity of their success, um, then 100% would be up there as well. We'll be over Stanford. Uh, next up, Miami, Florida State, Georgia Tech. I believe that those three are kind of all in the same boat here. Um, and we're really good. College, really good football colleges haven't really done a lot in the past, in recent years. I'm talking, I'm talking uh, college football playoffs here. Uh, but if either, if only three of them, especially Miami, specifically Miami, if Miami can get back to where they were, that's like that is instant money. That is money tomorrow. Uh, so I, I do think Miami is going to be uh, pretty big as well. And then after those, we have Oregon, Washington, uh, Pac-12, just because they're the largest of the Pac-12 that I think still need to be picked up. And then lastly, North Carolina and Duke. North Carolina and Duke, while you probably say basketball, um, you know, their basketball programs, while not on the level of the college football programs, still a lot of money that you can bring in, uh, split between your conference, um, really good names there. Uh, obviously, their their connection with stars in the NBA, for example, would really help elevate. Again, I know it's not football, but you can still make a lot of money off of those colleges, and I think that they should be in the top 10. All right, so now we get to the fun time. <laughs> um, who gets added? Right. So in doing the numbers, um, because they have 16 teams, it seems as if only the top eight. Right. Are going to be added. Um, now, that's where we get a little uh, a little tricky. Right. But this is what I have decided or what I think is going to happen based off of that. Essentially, what I see for the Big Ten, we'll start from the left here. Essentially, what I see is the Pac-12 merging with the Big Ten. Right. So they're going to get essentially you're just going to get all their big colleges. And just take them into the into the Big Ten. This one for the Big Ten, I could be one hundred percent wrong. Um, I could be one hundred percent wrong on this one. Uh, maybe I'm looking too much into the Pac-12 here. Um, the only reason why I do think that they're going to get some more Pac-12 teams is because you got to get more teams on the West Coast for USC and UCLA to play. Like they can't have all of, as of right now. If the football if football started. This year, USC and UCLA would play one game in California and then the rest of their games on the East Coast and the Midwest. Like, that is 
that's a brutal schedule, right? That is a brutal schedule. You got to get them more colleges, preferably at least two more, right? So you can have four. The two or more that, uh, that, that will probably be added is Washington, Oregon. I think if Notre Dame comes, you can also get Stanford uh, and then Cal, right? So those are kind of the top five. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so those are top five. Four of them are, in, are on the West Coast, which can be added with USC. Next up, gets kind of tricky here. I got Utah and Colorado. Uh, Utah is kind of a good um, football college. Don't know how much revenue they're bringing in, to be honest, neither with Colorado. Uh, but it does give you eyes in both states. And then Boston College in Pittsburgh, obviously with Penn, uh, Penn State there, uh, it does give you an added reach into Pennsylvania. It kind of takes over the entire Pennsylvania market, as well as spreads you more over to the East Coast. And then, now obviously they're only taking the top eight here, but I also wanted to put West Virginia in there. Um, I don't know. I, I've liked West Virginia. I, they do have somewhat of, of a good history, especially in the mid-2000s. Um, so kind of just put them in there. Maybe West Virginia, Virginia Tech, one of those type of Virginia schools because you got Maryland again. Uh, so that could also add that DMV aspect. DMV aspect. Uh, the maybes I have is basically Texas schools, right? I have, if you look at the SEC, I have more maybes for Texas schools, really. Um, that, that's really what the, the maybe is. The Big Ten wants to get into the Texas market. Um, they could potentially do so. TCU and Baylor aren't bad options. Um, again, I've heard a lot of great – in reading and looking at these videos, there's been tons and tons of push for Baylor. Because I'm not from the SEC or from the South, I don't really see it. Like Baylor, I'm, I'm from the Midwest. Baylor is not really known as that top of the school at all. Uh, again, I, mean, I was, I don't want to say which, 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 which streams I was, I was looking at here, but like, I was looking at a lot of streams, a lot of college and universities that you see here. I was looking at their streams to see what they thought. And I feel so bad at saying this, but I'm, I'm from the Midwest. So I'm in the big 10. I guess I'm used to the big 10 conference, if you will. Like, we do not care about most of your schools like that. Like a lot of colleges were, were saying like, yeah, we're going to get picked up. We're, we're pretty big. And I'm like, dude, like we don't. If we pick you guys up, great. If not, like nobody would care, which which sucks. That sucks. But we're really gonna figure out who are the haves and haves nots, right? But regardless, I do like you know I've heard a lot about Baylor's football program. I know that it's good. Uh, I know that they're you know top tier, and it's in Texas, uh, so that could be a really good get if the Big Ten is trying to get it, trying to get that or expand to Texas. Next up, the SEC. Uh, pretty simple. I'm not gonna go through every school, but I just see them staying in the South. Right, they're making a ton of money in the South. Just pick up a bunch of schools that are football focused, and then Duke and North Carolina um, that you think you can make money off of, and then just kind of go from there. Uh, for nine and ten, I put Kansas. Um, I mean, eh, you know, we'll we'll see on that. But you know, maybe Kansas State, Virginia Tech. I think Virginia Tech would be a really good get uh, for whomever gets them. Obviously, Miami, Florida State, Florida Tech, North Carolina, Duke. Uh, but, yeah, that's kind of where I see them focusing, staying down south, doing what they do best, um, and kind of doing that. I will be extremely surprised if the SEC go gets a conference out west, right, because it's kind of the big one that we're looking at right now. If they get a conference out west, this completely blows everything up in my mind, and this just makes anybody can get anybody. Uh, so we'll see, but I, I see them kind of focusing on, on the south, okay? So that's pretty much it. I thought this would be kind of a fun video uh, to do. Uh, so I'll post it, see, you know, if you guys have any questions, have anything to add, let me know. Uh, but as always, thanks so much. Uh, make sure you follow, like the video, and, you know, talk to you later.